Hi, I'm Grace Fraga, Certified Relationship Coach. And I am Elle Benet, ICF Certified Emotional Intelligence Coach. And this is I Heart My Narc with a Broken Heart. Yes. Oh, we did the yeah. heart. What's better this time? Well, yeah, <laughs> definitely. We're, we're in episode two, right? We are on part two. There was so much content when we did last month that we broke it into two parts. And so we're back with part two on how to spot a narc. Absolutely. So let's get to it, okay? We yes. are doing bullet points for everybody to be able to take notes and understand it really clearly. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so bullet point number cuatro. Okay. They lack empathy. Empathy is lack, yes. Yeah. And can you even, well, with yours, you had said was well, an actor. So can you fake empathy? How do you even know, you know, if it's yeah. true, if they're empathetic, how do you even know that? Well, first of all, let's define empathy or lack mm -hmm. of empathy. Mm -hmm. According to Wolfish, who's the therapist, she says the lack of empathy or the ability to feel how another person is feeling is one of the hallmark characteristics of a narcissist. Mm -hmm. So basically, narcissists lack the skill to make you feel seen, validating, understood, or accepting, accepted because they don't grasp the concept of feelings. Mm. So we empaths do understand and empathize and have compassion for other people's uh, pain and suffering. Uh, also, we, we tap into the joy and we are also feeling when they're feeling joy. Mm -hmm. um, narcs they don't have that ability of having empathy, but they do have the ability to pretend they do. They can act like they do care, like they do feel your pain and your feelings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the difference between an empath and a narcissist. The mm -hmm. both can exhibit that behavior, but one is real, the other one is fake. Right, right. And it's just something that unfortunately over time, yeah. you become aware of but it is one of the things that is a little difficult to detect once you're in the relationship. Absolutely, it is because especially like, <laughs> I was uh, with an, an actor, you know, and he- Exactly. Yeah, he would fake feelings. Uh, and and it's, it was good, he's he's a pretty good actor. He's a character mm -hmm. actor, uh, but he's good. You know, usually yeah. character actors are really good, actually. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, he could, he could fake anything. Like he could cry on cue and he could like, ah, be angry. And, oh, wow. Well, yeah, he could like, oh, I love you so much. You're the love of my life. And he would like cry and, you know, and you buy it because you're like, wow. oh. But, you know, again, like we talked on last episode, part of me, something in the back of my mind said, Grace, he's an actor. He could be faking this. Girl. So you had that gut feeling. Right. And that's the thing that really is really good because if it's genuine, you do feel that regardless if they're an actor or not. You as the recipient, you do feel it. And it's just learning to trust that gut feeling, that gut yeah. feeling that we cut off so often. We do. And especially as a victim of narcissistic abuse, I think we uh, at, at some point we question ourselves so much because mm -hmm. we don't know what's going on, what's real, what's happening. And, and we just learn to not listen to it. And I think also part of the toxic positivity where we excuse our narc mm -hmm. uh, makes us not listen to that part of us, that gut feeling that is 99.9% .9 accurate, may, yes. may we say. Yes, it so is, it so is. Um, and again, in a situation like yours, it's really pertinent that you do listen to the inner voice because you have someone who's an expert at masking wow. emotions. I know, but I'm also an actress, so. I kind of right. it, you know, but I was yeah. like, well, I was not really good acting. Um, mm. yeah. I can't mm. cry on cue though. That's terrible. I have to, because I'm an empath, like if somebody is feeling sadness and they're cry, I cry with them. Like I feel it, but you know, they can cry, cry on cue. I don't know how they do it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They can just bleh, cry. Yeah. So he could just do it on cue. Oh, wow. oh my God. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, he was a faker. A <laughs> big one for three years. I was with him for three years. Yes. How long were you with your narc? Too long. 
<laughs> no, about about a year and a half, I would say. Yeah. A year and a half, yeah. Yeah, you're probably yeah. shorter than I am. I was like, oh, maybe I'll stay a little longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did. You maybe get into that. Me. You get into that cycle. Yeah, you get I know. Into that cycle. Yeah. Um, and that brings us. Oh, you. I, I want to also touch on the other point as well, um, which is one of the next highlights that we have is severing your ties with your friends. You well, know? before we do that, let's cut. Wait, wait, oh. wait. You have to ask yourself. So, okay. How about this part? Okay. So basically for this point, right, for this lack of empathy, these are the questions you need to ask yourself and how to help spot if you're with an art or not. Mm -hmm. Does your partner care when you've had a bad day at work? Fight with your best friend or scuffle with your parents? That's going to bring us to our next point. Mm -hmm. Or do they get bored when you express the things making you mad and sad? Now, you ask yourself all those questions, and one of them leads us to card number, whatever it is, 200 now. Uh, so, which is, they don't have any or many long-term friends. Most narcissists won't have any long-term real friends. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that I did, I did pick up on. It was always a reason as to why his relationship ended with one of his friends. Mm -hmm. And I just knew... I, did take note of that. That's one thing I was like, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. His friends don't stay around very long. Mm -hmm. But over time, I noticed that for myself, I wasn't socializing. So going to the gym was something that I enjoyed doing. And if you notice that your own patterns of things that you love start uh -huh. seizing, that's just another indicator for yourself to thought provoking, you know, because you have to think about this is something that they might be used to mm -hmm. if they don't have a lot of friends well they will probably might want that same behavior for yourself because they want you to your to themselves oh to themselves, themselves their self absolutely they want you they hog you they want your time they want your body they want your emotions they want all of your you. soul your soul and you actually uh, told me that you think they're emotional vampires. Yes. The emotional vampire is like, you know, draining your energy, draining your energy, taking your time away. And again, oh, I love that we're doing this, Grace, because guys, someone can't take what you aren't willing to give. And so what we're here is just making you step into your power. And although those individuals, you're going to meet them, but you're going to meet them at a different place in your life now. Now we are surrounding yourself with love and you see yeah. these signs and these tips that we're sharing and you're ready for it. You're ready for it. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's almost like, a, like a cult. Uh, you, you were in a cult, right? And it, what they do is they isolate you from anybody who can give you a smart opinion or who can call out what's going on and what they're doing. Yes. So I feel, I felt my personal experience, which is the only thing I can speak from, uh, I felt like he wanted, he was like a cult. He wanted to, he criticized all my friends. They all wanted to abuse me, which was funny because that's what he did. But they all wanted to use me and abuse me, according to him. And then the, the deal breaker of all deal breakers was when he tried to sever my relationship with my mom. Mm. And I was like, you know, you're trying to make me choose between you and my mom. And guess what? For me, there's no choice. My mom. She's Absolutely. my family. So if you're trying to do that, it's not going to work. It. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So good. So good. And yes, just to realize, um, again, if you're feeling or becoming isolated, then that's a really scary place to be because Absolutely. you weren't reaching out for help at all. Yeah. You know, I couldn't hang out with my friend. That's the thing, the invisible chains, right? From a cult. It's like invisible chains all in our mind. Absolutely. All in our mind. And so yeah. they get planted there, but we have to break through, break through mm -hmm. those chains and realize that we do have the power. And I feel that our friends sometimes too, like for anyone listening in, because we might have people that are friends 
mm-hmm. of someone that's mm-hmm. in a narcissistic relationship. So if you see yeah. that your friend that you used to hang out with quite often, all of a sudden, you rarely see her, you rarely see him. That's a sign. That could be a sign. And mm-hmm. don't stand. I would have loved it if my friends ask a little more. It's not their responsibility at all. However, it would have been a nice lifeline, a little wake up call. Definitely. Definitely. Well, you were in a cult also. When may we talk about that? Are you comfortable with that? Well, in my childhood, yes, I was. In your childhood. Yes. So, um, so how, what techniques did they use to isolate you? Because that might help us understand a little bit more of the narcissist's uh, techniques or, or ways of doing things. I don't feel it was intentional, but it was scare tactics. And again, I don't mm-hmm. feel it was intentional. It was just part of a cult, firm belief and segregation from the outside world. Mm-hmm and a fine line of what you could not do. And it was brainwashing, really. You know, and once you're brainwashed, you don't have an interest in socializing outside. And it's the same in that relationship. They somehow make you feel as though they are the source. For myself, I was stepping into singing and no one told me that I had the ability to sing until Mm -hmm. this, well, I was stepping into it and he encouraged me to step onto stage. All these things that I couldn't do, couldn't do on my own. Mm -hmm. He was my source and he knew that. Right. Yes, they do that on purpose. Um, My narc was like, nobody will ever love you like I do. Nobody will ever make love to you like I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he actually planted those seeds in my head and it did affect my uh, trying to have relationships with other people. It's, it just stayed in my head. Like nobody will love you like me. Nobody, you know, so these people plant seeds in your head and you, it's almost like mind programming. That's why I was asking you about the cult too, because mm-hmm. they mind program you, whether it's intentional or not. And yeah. I feel like the narcs also mind program you and they plant seeds and words have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. So that's a, another way that they dominate you um, just by words. By words. So My true. programming. Yeah. It's so true. And it's so subtle. And it's something that just happens. And one of those things where you're like, how do I end up here? But you do. And it's okay. And it's okay. And there's a way out as well. Absolutely. Um, so questions to ask yourself regarding this um side of an arc about the, their friends and how they cut you out. Mm-hmm. How does your partner treat someone they don't want anything from? Oh, they're users. Remember that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does your partner have any long-term friends? Do they have or talk about wanting a nemesis? <laughs> That's, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so those are questions you need to ask. And, and also if they're trying to uh, cut out all your relationships or criticize your friends and your family so that you won't have a soundboard, big red flag. Yes, yes. Huge. Exactly. And just to give an example of how it might look, it might not be so much as don't go out with your friends. So it might not be that obvious. Right. It shows itself in when you're getting ready to mm-hmm. go out and you're getting dressed up. That That is that compassionate side that they work on as far as, oh, I'm going to be home by myself. I'm home alone. You know, so they aren't telling you not to go. Yeah. But they're feeding on that emotional side that makes you not want to go because they're going to be alone. So it just comes in different ways, some not as obvious as others. Mm -hmm. And just to be mindful for. Absolutely. And also I found that another way that Minarch um, did it was he was always like i do stand-up comedy and he would always go to my shows as a way of controlling me make sure i wouldn't have people talking to me and um taking me away from him Mm -hmm. uh he would also spend a lot of time at home and i when i asked him can you like go with your friends or something he was retired by the way he was an older man and i would be like can you just go out with your friends or whatever so i can have an hour to myself at home and he would throw a fit like, oh, that means you don't love me. You don't want me to be here. And like a whole drama mm. because I asked him to just go out with his friends for an hour so I could have time to myself at home. Wow. 
big red flag. Big flag. Yeah. Big flag. Huge red flag. But of course, I didn't see it until a friend of mine pointed out that I was being abused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. So let's go to the next bullet point. Mm -hmm. um, they pick on you constantly. Maybe at first it feels like teasing, but then it gets mean or becomes constant. So suddenly everything you do from what you wear to what you eat to what you who you hung out with. And name calling. You, name calling. That's another thing. They put you down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do it subtly. And they sometimes not subtly. so subtly. <laughs> sometimes not so subtly. Like, you ain't shit. <laughs> That's not so subtle. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I have an arc in my life that, well, I don't want him in my life, but I have to uh, be, you know, deal with this person. Mm -hmm. And this person, I'm not going to say he or she, um, this person um, insults you whenever you can't even have a decent, normal conversation. Mm -hmm. All this person does is insult you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and it's, it. so, it's so true. It's like they, um, they want that reaction. They want yes, to feed off that reaction. You That's got it. Yeah, that's what they feel. And you know what's so funny about um, feeding off negative emotions is I'm all about, you know, love. And I love the one quote, even if it isn't a question, love is the answer. I love it. I love that too. And it really made me reflect on the relationship because when I met all of his negative behaviors with love and compassion, it escalated. Yeah. To the point where it actually we started becoming violent. And that's mm -hmm. where I severed it because I do have the children and yeah. the violence was just a no brainer for me. It was just becoming too apparent. And so, but it was just, wow, love can bring out this, like they want it so much. They feed off the negativity. Yes. They can't deal with peace. No, they hate that. It was, I don't know about your narc, but mine, I would have, Every so often, every a few days, there was some trigger, some bogus trigger where he would blow up and call me names yes. or all say horrible things about me. And I would react instead of just stepping back. That's another that's a good talk to step back and not say anything. It's very hard when you're it with is. um and he would feed off my anger and my negative emotions mm -hmm. to the point where I don't know if this happened to you, but when I left the relationship, I felt so drained. But when I got into my new apartment, I felt this big burden being lifted off my shoulders and I had so much energy. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. He sucked the life out of me. And then when I'm away from him, I am a new person. Yes. Like I had no idea I had all this energy and I was like, oh my God, I'm back. Yes, yes. And what I love what you had said, it's so challenging to do the step away and not respond to it. But if you can, even if it's just one time, just see the response of yes. when, just do it intentionally. Say, hey, I'm actually not gonna respond because I wanna see what their response is to my non-response. Is it on point with what they're saying? Just do it as a test. I love it. How did you find, like, whenever you did that, whenever you stepped back and didn't react or engage, that's the word, right? Engage. Because uh, if we don't engage, then there's nothing for them to feed off of. It was no energy for him to feed off. And that's nothing. when it actually got worse. And it gets, like, yes, because they just, oh, I know. The one that, the narc that insults me all the time, uh, it's whenever you don't engage, they get even angrier. It, it was. They, oh my gosh. And they spew like the worst thing. Yes. And that's what the violence triggered. That's why I was like, I was out because it got too much. And I just kept, yeah. I said, whoa, too much, too far. Yeah. That Yes. Well, there's a, a point where you lose respect for them and they, mm -hmm. they, they lost respect. They never respected you to begin with. Right. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but then at some point you lose respect and that's when you need to go because then you're going to lose your soul. That's the main thing for everybody listening out there. It is really important that you leave because you eventually will lose yourself and lose your soul with this type of relationship. Mm -hmm. They do that to you. And they, the earlier you leave, the better. Seek yes. help. Definitely seek help. 
And if they're violent, you know, just just go to like a shelter, a woman's shelter. I'm sure they, they have a man's shelter, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, yes, they do. Yeah, because uh, it goes both ways. Some women uh, do get physical. It, uh, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. And it's so funny because, again, I love that we have uh, different experiences. Mm -hmm. Because somebody said, oh, well, I have children. Well, that is a big reason why you do what, what you just said, easily yes. for children. Because staying in a relationship, I'm not encouraging anyone to make a decision based on what I'm saying. Is This is basically to expand your mindset mm -hmm. is when you do something for your children, it's something that is beneficial for them. So sometimes it's beneficial to step away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everyone's you, uh, a situation is going to be different. Again, this is just to expand our mindset. Absolutely. Uh, so here it says uh, a warning sign. Okay. So we're going to give our audience a warning sign uh, as far as like how to catch this type of behavior. If they knock you down with insults, when you do something worth celebrating, get away. A narcissist might say you were able to do that because I didn't sleep well mm -hmm. or some excuse to make it seem like you have an advantage that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. They want you to know that you're not better than them because to them, nobody is. Mm. I love that. I love that. Some nice recaps. Some Definitely.